Okay, hello everybody, welcome back to CM42 TV. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I made a quick video about All In. I think it was important and I think uh, I feel as if I've had to put a tie on it, not even just to, to put it to bed in any way, but just to kind of make sure that there's some sort, of, some form of document of my opinion for myself on this show because I think it was very important and I did watch the entire show uh, I made sure that I, I caught the whole thing um, and it's just so, I'm here in podcasting studios by the way, this is where we do the podcast, so I don't know why that had to be mentioned but um, that was like a cheap plug to the massive audience that's sitting here right now, nobody, the mirror there and the, the camera, hello everybody, um, yes I went all in with all in and uh, it was just, that's the thing right, so if I could pick one show to go to this year, it probably would have been that one, probably more than WrestleMania, which is bonkers because WrestleMania is like my dream, you know, to go to. More than the Royal Rumble, more than whoever. Um, just because of the buzz around it. And like, obviously, you know, it's it's a huge arena, right? 10,000 seats is feckin' massive, but it's not one of your biggest ones, right? Um, and I, don't get me wrong, I think this is like an absolute achievement. It's like the relaunch of, of alternative wrestling, Officially, you know, there's always going to be something there, but this is like, this is a new movement. We're going through a revolution right now with, with a lot of, you know, wrestling. Um, but, you know, if they were to do this every single week, you know what I mean? The will it, would it sell out more than 10,000 every single week? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. The fact this is this big thing that was just built up for months and months and months, and it was almost like a bet that, you know, against everybody who said it couldn't happen, it's going to happen, we're going to make sure it's going to happen, and we have all these stars and all these matches, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, it's never happened before, it's the first American company to sell out over 10,000 seats that's not WWE um, in advance, this big thing, you know what I mean? That's why everybody was there. That's why everybody went all in because it was such. They wanted to be part of this movement. They wanted to be part of this experience and all the Starcast stuff that was going along with it. It's a bit like ROH selling out Madison Square Garden on WrestleMania weekend. Yes, it is an amazing accomplishment, amazing, like unbelievable. Um, but it's also on WrestleMania weekend where eighty thousand people are going to be in New York. So 20,000 of those 80 are going to be ROH fans and that's pretty okay and pretty unbelievable that, you know, ROH is reaching that many people but, you know, they, they managed to sell MSG out because of that, you know. I would love them to sell out MSG in feckin' May or July, you know, and um, that would be even more impressive. And that's kind of why I liked All In more because it was a random point in the year, there's no WWE help. You know what I mean? That being said, though, see everybody that's going on about how, you know, Vince is shaking in his boots and Vince is going to be hating this and you know, Vince's dad is going to be rolling over in his grave. I just read that tweet and I couldn't believe it. Like, Vince McMahon absolutely loves this, you know, all-in stuff. Because, believe it or not, Vince McMahon is not out to kill the wrestling business. He's out... To make it thrive more. He just wants to be in control of his empire, which is WWE, and he wants WWE to kind of call the shots. And that's fine. They have the right to do that, and they do do that. But the fact that another company, it's not even a company. The fact that people he knows, right? Cody Rhodes could be like family, could be like a son to him at this point. Um, has done this on his own with his mates. They've funded this thing. It's got the wrestling world buzzing. They've made a ton of money. They've made all this exposure for other places for people to go and work and for more talent to be developed to one day, believe it or not, end up in WWE anyway. It's a bit like ECW back in the day. Vince McMahon was the biggest supporter of ECW in the world. But at the time, we ECW, I'm saying me as if I was here, but ECW fans were like, no, screw Vince McMahon, screw the WWE, we're ECW, we don't want to listen to yous. you. Look at all the success ECW's having. Vince must hate this. Vince loved it. Vince loved the fact, the only people he didn't like was WCW because they were going out their way to put him out of business. Cody Rhodes and Matt and Nick Jackson and Kenny Omega and Carrie Silken and whoever. I'm not going to try to put Vince McMahon out of business, right? It's not going to happen, so there's no reason for Vince McMahon to not enjoy this. Vince McMahon's un unbelievable passion for wrestling and sports entertainment isn't just because he gets to do three hours of Raw every week. It's because of everything, you know, that goes on. Of course, you know. But that's the thing, though. All of them is a massive success, but it's not going to be... It's not as successful as Raw is going to be on Monday. You know what I mean? 
So I, I just that was annoying. It was annoying. I just made me laugh. Like all these people thinking that Vince is miserable because another place, another wrestling promotion, kinda another wrestling promoter sold out ten thousand seats that wasn't him. That's not a threat to him at all. But when I was watching the show, I thought the show was magnificent. By the way, it was beautifully done. Every match was different. There was a hint of everything that hit all the different spots. It was um, it was absolute class, and. Um, I think Cody Rhodes should be so proud. I think the the Bucks should be so proud. A total Bullet Club, you know, we're going to put everybody over apart from Marty, poor Marty. Um, and then obviously, if you watch the show, you kind of kind of figured out maybe not live in in person, but when you're watching the home, it was pretty obvious. Um, about the time, you know, they'd obviously paid for what four hours of live feed, and what people don't understand, live feed and live content for pay per view and stuff is really expensive. You know, you need a certain number of buys to make that money back. So when you've, if you've bought four hours, you're, you're only getting four hours. You know what I mean? So um, you can see there was a, it was the Marty Scurrow and Okada match that went 26 minutes long. Oh my God. Um, you know, and I love that every match was kind of long and stuff. It was like, uh, listen, between 15 minutes and 20 minutes, that's your, that's a great match elements there. You don't need to have matches, singles matches for no title or whatever to go 26 minutes. It's daft when there's loads of other big main event matches, right? So you can see the refs kind of freaking out, and the fact that it was the Japanese referee Tiger Hattori was was referee in this match, and he doesn't really know about times because New Japan just doesn't care about the time stuff. No, they don't care, but they don't have that there. Um, the referee Paul Turner was down, and he was slapping the mat. He was like, "Go home, you gotta go home. Come on, we're running out of time." And then the main event only had fifteen minutes. I had uh, the buck. It was the the young bucks and Kota Kota Bushi and the Golden Leap versus. I don't know the other Mexican guy's name. I've never seen him before. Don't call me a racist. Phoenix, who's awesome in Rey Mysterio. And the match ended up being really good because they had 10 minutes left and it just went feckin' mental. And there was no wrestling. It was just flips and fast-paced drop kicks and stuff. Great way in the show. And I think, you know, I think that was on purpose, by the way. I'll be Obviously, you know, it wasn't like, oh, what match is going to be on last? Let's see what happens. Obviously, they put that match on last. But I think that was a very smart move. I think they thought about this, you know, what matches are going to go long? Right, Cody and Nick Aldis, which was fucking brilliant, pardon the language. Um, Okada and Skrull is going to go long. Kenny and Pentagon is going to go long. Uh, even Hangman Page stuff is going to go long. The ROH title is going to probably go long. What match can be quick in case we run out of time? And it was, you know, and it, it was the perfect match to go on last because they could just go all out for 10 minutes. Go all in. Um, and then after the show, there's a video on YouTube of like them doing like the speech after the show saying thanks for coming and everything. Nick Jackson said they finished it with three seconds to spare. Three seconds! Gives me the fear. Um, but literally, as well, the finish, Phoenix uh, came and interrupted the finish of the match and then they just did the Meltzer driver and that was it. And then like, one, two, three, thanks for watching all in and that was it. Which is very funny. But, and then Rey Mysterio was late for his entrance again. I say again because uh, here in Glasgow there's a little promotion called ICW who uh, ran the Hydro in November last year. I won a free ticket for it and a story for another day. And, um, <laughs> and uh, they had, Ray Mysterio was on the show and he was fighting a guy called Kenny Williams and uh, Kenny Williams came out in that and Ray Mysterio's music hit and I'm, I'm telling you, 50% maybe of the audience there were there to see Ray Mysterio. Um, at least I knew a lot of them were. And uh, Rey Mysterio was late for his entrance again. What is up with him? He was on time for the Royal Rumble. Don't know why. That's weird. Why is he late for things that aren't WWE? But anyway. Um, yeah. Other thing to mention is uh, the Nick Aldis and Cody Rhodes match for the NWA title. Now, the NWA title, it's like, we never see it. You know what I mean? It's not on TV. Maybe it is in some random place. It's a random YouTube show. They'll have matches here and there. It's not, you know, this big prestigious title. But I'm telling you, by the way, that match with Cody and Nick Aldis, Magnus, they made that title feel feckin' important. The big fight feel, the, the teams walking into the ring, Errol Hebner being the ref. Um, probably my match of the night, I think, just based on that, and Cody won the title, and I just love the emotion Cody has in his face. Win winning the same title, 39 years after his dad won the title. Mental. And then... Uh, other match of the night goes to, to Kenny and Penta. I think Pentagon's great. I'm a big impact guy. So um, I love him. And then Kenny Omega obviously is, is one of the best in the world. And then Jericho, I guess that was another big thing. That was a big spoiler. Um, 
the fact he, he did, uh, I don't know if anyone knows it, obviously they do know it, but if, if you don't know, uh, they finished all in and then Jericho went to do a Fozzie gig right after the show when he did the Fozzie gig with the Pentagon face paint on. So cool. But people were tweeting, people who were at the Fozzie gig, I can't believe you're there, you're being punked, you know, you you wasted your money, Jericho's not even there. He's in Chicago for a wrestling show. And Jericho took a private jet and flew to wherever he was going, I think it was Kansas City maybe, to do the Fozzie gig. That's a, that's a rock star there, man. That's like the GOAT, Chris Jericho. And I couldn't believe as well, they had Omega and Pentagon so far late on in the, in the card, you know what I mean? If he was going to catch a Fozzie gig, then maybe they should have put it on a bit earlier on, you know? But I suppose it was a big match. But yeah, Jericho's just been the best ever. You know, obviously I'm a WWE guy at heart, so I kind of, you know, hope he'd end up doing more stuff in WWE, but I'm happy, you know, for him to do it every once, and now this big sort of wrestling boom is unbelievable. And when I was watching the show, uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, imagine this was a show every week, you know, or like even every month, like TNA used to be, you know, the monthly pay-per-views, you know, because um, it looked so good, you know, the roster, if that, if that was like the roster of one company, it's unbelievable, you know. Um, so there you go. That, that could be the biggest threat, I guess, to WWE. But it's not going to be a threat. They just signed a feckin' deal with Fox for $4 billion. Nothing's going to be a threat to WWE. However, it's the closest thing to coming to in a long time, you know. Uh, so that's amazing. What an experience. What a time to be a wrestling fan. I wish I was there. But obviously, it's, I couldn't have done that. But uh, yeah, brilliant. I hope everybody enjoyed all in. I certainly did. And I'm hoping that we uh, see something else soon in that sort of group. It's an amazing roster of people, um, so talented. And uh, it's just hard work paying off, isn't it? Just hard work. You see people doing the work and you see it paying off and it's so satisfying, so satisfying to see. So uh, congratulations to all involved. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. Uh, what is next on CM42? Fortnite, by the way, coming up soon. Then a new classic good bit. And a new, a brand new episode of The Good Bit on iTunes is this Friday, I hope. And then will be my Blu-ray haul. So that's coming up here on CM42 TV. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care of yourselves. It's been a pleasure. It's been a real pleasure.